all right dear students in this lecture we are going to discuss the introduction to the business first of all we'll be focusing what is business after discussing the definition of the business we'll be moving towards the types of business we're going to differentiate those types of the business and then we'll be discussing the advantages and disadvantages of every type of the business so this lecture focuses on the business the types of the business and the advantage and disadvantage now first of all you need to understand what is business if you look at the plain definition the plain definition is a legal activity undertaken to generate profit so there's a term we use that is view of profit remember this thing that nobody wants a losses nobody wants to incur a loss everyone is looking for the profits when you start up a business you look to earn some money from it so that is why everyone every business if you talk about a single person who is actually doing the business or you talk about two persons doing the business or if you talk about any organization who is doing a business for right now i'm not using those terminologies because we have haven't studied yet but whatever everyone who is doing the business is looking for the profit so the view of profit is actually the basic essential element of the definition because sometimes the students ask so what if a business is doing a loss if a business is doing a loss we'll still call that activity as a business because they are not doing the losses intentionally they may be facing the losses due to their bad strategies they may be facing the lo losses due to the economic recessions they may be facing the losses due to the due to the decrease in the demand whatever but again the view is to incur profits the view is to gain the profit so the basic definition of the business is a legal activity undertaken to generate profit now we have many other definitions many other ways to discuss what is business like for example a business is a commercial or industrial concern i have given you a diagram you see this is a manufacturing company they are making some products so a business is a commercial now commercial means they have a business context whatever they are making whatever they are producing whatever they are manufacturing they will be selling those thing, those things in the market to their customers to the to the consumers or industrial concern which exists to deal in the manufacture resale or the supply of the goods and services so you talk about the manufacturing companies similarly a business is an organization which uses economic resources to create goods or services which consumers will buy like say for example you have a company which is selling the furniture now that means in order to make the furniture you use the wood you need the wood to make the furnitures so what you are doing you are actually using the wood which is a, an economic resource to make the furniture similarly you are making the papers so if you are a company which is selling the papers again you need the wood a specific thing from the tree in order to make the paper similarly if you are making the sugar your company is making a sugar you need the sugar canes from the crops that means you are using the economic resources and then eventually you are converting that into a product a business is an organization providing jobs for the people now obviously when you are doing a business say for example you see in the diagrams there are a lot of people in the every diagram in every picture you see here we have four people two here and two here and again in the next picture here you can see the people here you can see the people these are actually the employees who are working for the company so business is, is an organization providing jobs for the people they are creating an employment in the in the environment they are giving the jobs to the people because 
you cannot control everything yourself. A single person cannot handle the finance and the production and the delivery and the distribution. You need to be a superman for that. Again, that is something not practical. A business invests money in resources, for example, building machinery and employees in order to make even more money for its owners. Okay, is, this makes sense that you are investing in a building, you're purchasing it, you're making an office over there. Machinery makes sense, you see in the diagram, you, you, you bought a machinery and then you're using it for the production. Do we invest in our employees? This is a question. Yes, we do, employ, we do invest in our employees. Like we train them, we give them the different trainings, we actually conduct different workshops for them, we arrange different seminars for them, we train them. We teach them how to produce this product, we teach them how to do the finance, we teach them how to represent the company product in the market. That means we are actually investing something on the people. So we do invest on the employees as well. So in short, what is business? A business is actually a legal activity undertaken to generate profits. So remember this legal terminology is important as well because we are not going to call everything which makes money as a business. Like what if you are actually doing, doing the drug trafficking? You will be still making a lot of money, even more than the companies. Drug trafficking makes a lot of money. They're actually a mafia. They are dealing in the underworld. So that means you're making a lot of money. Can we call it a business? No, because it is illegal. Similarly, if you're doing a money laundering, you're saving a money, you're helping the people in doing money laundering. This may be a business for you, but in legal terms, we cannot call this as a business. So that means in order to call an activity as a business, first of all, it should be legal because legality is an important factor here. And the second thing is that you should have a view of profit. Now, there's another question which you have in your mind, which may which may be in, is coming in your mind. There are organizations which are not for profit. We know about the organizations. Which are not for profit, they are not making any profits. They didn't intend to make any profits. For example, ACCA, again, ACCA is a not-for-profit organization. You talk about the charities, you talk about some government institutions, they are doing the trust work, but they are not making profits or they do not intend to make the profits. Usually we call them organizations. But sometimes those organizations are registered as the companies as well. In that context, you can call them the business because again, they are coming under the head of the business. They are doing some activity. Like for example, if you want to register a charity, then you may have multiple options. Like in the company law, you may have multiple options to register a charity. One way of registering a charity, specifically talking about my country law, company law, I'm talking about the company law of my country. There is a way that you can register your charity, register your trust under the Companies Act. So that means you are coming under the head of the companies, you are making a company. In that context, you can, even your not-for-profit organization as a business, because, because obviously you are, you are bringing that business into the, into the head of the business activities, but you do not intend to make any profits. But usually in, in the normal terms, and if you talk about the ordinary meaning of a business is an activity which makes the profit or you are having a view of making the profit. So this is called business. Now the second thing you need to know, <coughs> sorry, is a type of business. Now remember we have three types of business. The first one is the sole trader. The second one is the partnership. The third one is the limited liability companies. And I'll be explaining these three to you. Make sure you are attentive. The first thing is the sole trader. This is also known as sole proprietorship, as you see in the diagram on the right hand side. So this sole tradership is also known as the sole proprietorship. So you see in the picture, 
there is only a single person in the picture that shows the sole tradership means sole means single a single person is actually involved in the trading activity a single person is doing the business a single person controls the business a single person owns the business he may have employees one employee two employee even the 10 employees but we are talking about the owns and controls we are talking about the ownership and control when you say the ownership and control is with the single person that mean that person will be enjoying all the profits and will be bearing all the losses so a single person controls and owns the business enjoys all the profits and bears all the losses but again when you are talking about a sole tradership they may have the helping persons they may have the employees because employees are there to help them they are not the in, involved in the ownership of that business then you have the partnership so partnership even a layman knows that two or more persons doing a business and they are doing the business according to their partnership agreement so the essential thing in the partnership is the partnership agreement say for example two people are doing a business then obviously they will be deciding how much each is going to invest and then obviously they will be discussing how much each person is going to spend in terms of time and then you'll they will be discussing the profit and loss sharing ratio so that means there will be a partnership agreement in which all the terms will be written which are being settled between the two or more persons so partnership is when two or more persons doing a business according to their partnership agreement but there is one thing you need to understand there is one thing you need to understand because in the next slides when we are discussing the advantages and disadvantages you will be looking at those terminologies over there in the sole tradership i said that a single person controls and owns the business enjoys all the profits and bears all the losses now that means this person has the complete responsibility of everything no one is going to take the responsibility other than other than this person so that means we can say this sole trader you can say this person who is in the picture actually have the complete responsibility of the business now if the if this business needs to pay someone this person will be paying if the if, if the business needs to take the money from some person the money belongs to this person so this person who is actually a sole trader have the complete responsibility of the business like say for example let me give you a scenario for example this person invested 100000 in the business now what if he actually incurs a loss what if incurs a loss and now he has to pay dollar 1200 instead more than what he invested yes so whatever if it is more than what he invested or it is less than what he invested he needs to bear all the losses so that means this person is completely responsible and we know that term we call that term in the accounting as unlimited liability unlimited liability that means this person has the complete obligation there is no limit on his obligation whatever the profit is he will be enjoying all the profit himself he will not be sharing with anyone whatever the loss is even the loss is more than his investment he will be bearing up that loss so that means there is an unlimited 
liability in the sole traditorship. Similarly, when you talk about the partnership, in the partnership, although you are investing according to a certain percentage, you are investing time according to your partnership agreement, you are taking the profit from the business according to your agreed ratio, you are bearing the losses according to your agreed ratio, but there is no cap, no limit of the amount of profit or the amount of losses in the partnership as well. So again, when you talk about the partnership, again, there is an unlimited liability. Say for example, I invested $100,000 and now the loss is for 1500. So that means I should bear it even if it is more than my investment because there is no cap on the amount of loss or the amount of profit. There's no cap on the profit. There's no limit of the profit. Whatever the business is earning, even more than your expectation, you will be enjoying that. If there are losses, even more than your investment, you will be bearing that. So remember this thing that in the sole tradership and the partnership, there is actually unlimited liability. You know, simply unlimited liability means unlimited. There's no cap. There is no limit. Liability means there is no cap on the obligations. So if there are losses, even more than in your investment, that means you have to bear it. You have to bear it. You may be, you may be required to put your personal investment, to your personal, put your personal savings in order to face those losses. But again, no one going to support you because everything belongs to you. So in the sole tradership, a single person will be doing that. In the partnership, again, there's no cap on the full losses or the profits, but again, they will be sharing according to their profit or loss sharing ratio. Why I actually explain this unlimited liability? Because the name of the third type of business is actually a limited liability company. This is completely different from the above two which you have studied. How it is different? Now, the limited liability means that there is actually a cap on the liability. Liability is restricted. Simply, there is a cap. When we say a cap, that means liability is restricted. Now, the liability is restricted only to the extent of the amount of the capital that person who is going to be a shareholder in the company. Now say for example, if I bought 1000 shares in the company and the price of that share is $10 each. Now how much I have invested in total? I have invested $10,000. Now if the company is making a loss, all I can lose is this $10,000 which I've invested. The company may not ask more than this 10,000 from me in order to contribute in the losses of the company. Why it is that? Why we are giving the exemption to the company? Because the reason is the company is a legal entity. Legal entity. Are the sole tradership and the partnerships are the illegal business? No, they are not illegal businesses, but they are not legal entity. By we, by when we talk about the legal entity, we'll be doing that in a slide later on. When we talk about a legal entity, an artificial person, that means the law consider a company just like a sole tradership. A sole trader is a natural person. Similarly, this company is actually an artificial person. Company is actually a registered business. You cannot start the company without registering it. Like say, for example, you are actually sleeping and you had a dream that, okay, you should start selling burgers. You should start selling burgers in your town. The next day you woke up, you were actually having the investment in your bank account. You withdrew some investment you purchase some necessary equipments and then the same day you started selling burgers. 
Now, no one is going to stop you from selling the burgers. No one can stop you from doing the business. If you are maintaining a quality, you are staying at the legal place. No one can stop you by for selling the burgers. If you do not have the spot, you can even roam around the town and sell your own burgers because you do not need a company to sell your burgers. You even do not need a shop or the name to sell your burgers. This is an example of the sole tradership. Similarly, if you can provide the services, for example, you are a plumber, for example, you are an accountant, you can prepare the financial statements for the businesses. You just woke up and you make your own Facebook page and you tell the people, I can make your financial statement and they contract you, you start working for them. There's no need to register your business somewhere. All you are doing is you are utilizing your skills. You are providing the services to the companies or the individuals. Similarly, if you want to do something, but you lack investment, but you lack, you lack for example, time, and you need someone who can support you in terms of time, you need someone who can support you in terms of the investment you need. For example, you want to start the business which sells the football kits, football shirts. It's very famous worldwide, like the people love to buy the football shirts of their uh, favorite club. So you are going to start the business for selling the football shirt outside the stadium, outside the football stadium. You need you you can arrange a stall and you want to sell the football shirts. But in order to buy a stock, you need someone who can support you to reach a required level of investment. So what do you do? You contact your friend and you say, I have an idea and I have a supplier who can provide us the stock. Why don't we start selling the football shirts outside the stadium? Now, this was a good idea. It clicked to your friend and then you club your investment and you started your own business. There's no place where you need to register your business. You just actually wrote, uh, wrote an agreement. You both signed on it just to make sure that you are actually agreeing on the terms and then you started your business. This is the definition of the legal entity. When you are starting your sole traderships, sole proprietorship, when you are starting your partnership, there's no need to register your businesses somewhere and you can just do it straight away. But if you want to make a company, then you have to go through a legal process. Without going through the legal process, you cannot make the company. So you have to select the name, you have to pay the subscription fee, you have to submit your documents to the company registrar. These things you will be studying in your F4 law paper, corporate and business law, which is F4. That is why a company is a legal entity. We'll be discussing this thing in more detail in the next slide. So a company is a legal entity and the difference between the sole traditionship and partnership with the company is that in the sole traditionship and partnership, there is unlimited liability. But in the company, there is a limited liability that the shareholder will be responsible to the extent of their investment they have done in the business and not more than that. <clears throat> Sorry. Now in this slide, we'll be moving into the further details. Although I have explained you a bit that what is the legal entity actually means. But again, so unlike sole tradership and the ordinary partnership, a company is a legal person separate from its owners. Because when you are doing the sole tradership, there is no need to register somewhere. When you are doing the, when you are dealing with the uh, partnership, there is no need to register your business somewhere. You can start straight away by having your own agreement. There is no need to even register your agreement somewhere. But if you want to make a company, that means you have to go through a legal process. So if you want to make a company, you have to go through a legal process. 
So without registering your company, you cannot start, you cannot start it. You can restart your basis. Now, there are some implications. There are some differences that why the company is a legal entity, why the company is having a separate legal personality and what makes it different, what makes it different from the sole tradership and the partnership. The first thing which you have already discussed. Now, in the sole trade of in, sole traditional in the partnership, you are not responsible up to some extent. You are fully responsible for everything. That means there is no cap, there is no restriction on the profits and losses. You can earn as many profits as you want. Then, if there are losses, that will not be restricted up to your investment. So you have to bear all the losses even in the sole tradership and the partnership. So there's unlimited liability over there. But if you talk about the companies, a shareholder actually invest in the company in the form of shares. As I've told you that if you want to invest within the company, you need to buy the shares. Now share has a price on it. So obviously you will be paying the price for the share you are actually doing the investment in a formal process. So that means, <clears throat> sorry, that means you will only be responsible for the investment you have made and not more than that. This is the concept of the limited liability. Now, the second thing is the separation of ownership from control. This is again, one thing you need to understand. And there are two implications of that. The first thing is you probably have heard like the, I am the director of that company. I am the director of that company. People saying like that. Similarly, if you go to the website, you see there are, you know, advertisement like there's a Pepsi company and this person is the finance director of the Pepsi company. But the, it is only written that he is actually a director. But you may know some companies who in terms of ownership belongs to someone else, but they are being managed by someone else. So in the companies, there is a separation of ownership from control. That means the companies are managed by directors. So what is actually the process? The shareholders are considered to be a layman. They have the investment, but they do not have the expertise to run the company. And then there are people who do not have the investments, but have the expertise to run the company. So that means actually they will be clubbing. So the shareholders are ready to provide the investments and those people who have the expertise are running, will be running the company on behalf of those investors. That means the shareholders. So there is a separation of ownership from the control. The, the, the people who are running the company are actually not the one who own the company. Although in some companies, the shareholders are themselves running the company. I do not disagree with that. But if you talk about the general feature of the company, that means the shareholders are sitting outside the organization and the directors are running the company on their behalf. But again, there are companies which are being run by the shareholders themselves. The companies are managed by the director. This is the first thing. The second thing is that the companies actually considered, the companies are actually considered separate from their owners and directors. The companies are considered separate from their owners. and directors. That means the shareholders and directors. Like say, for example, if the company sold the products to a customer, those products were faulty. Those products was not according to the contract. Now that customer wants to sue someone because they didn't provide the right products to them. So that customer cannot even sue the owners and the directors 
what they can do is to sue the company directly because owners are sitting outside the organization the directors are running the company on the shareholders behalf company itself is an artificial person so if the customers wants to sue this business they're going to sue the company itself rather than the owners and the shareholders this is the first thing similarly ability to borrow if you talk about the sole tradership if you talk about the partnership <clears throat> sorry if you talk about the sole tradership and the partnership if these two types of businesses needs finance these two types of business needs loan then the loans will be given to the <clears throat> sole trader or the partner the banks will be giving the loan either to that person who is a sole trader or the partners the bank will not be giving the the loan to the sole tradership not to the business but to the businessman similarly in the partnership they are not going to give the loan to the partnership they will be giving the loan to the partner and the partners or the sole trader needs to keep security when they are getting the loan but this is not the case in the company in the company it is the company who will be getting the loan not some owners and not the directors so when the company is getting the loan it is not on the name of the owners neither it is on the name of the directors it is the company which is getting the loan <clears throat> so this is the difference now one more thing that you need to understand that how this separate legal personality of the company makes it different from the rest of the types of the business the transfer of ownership and perpetual succession for example i am having the shares i am having the shares right now and i think mm -hmm, i should sell my shares then i'll be selling my shares to you for example you sold the shares to your friend your friend sold the shares to someone else shares are moving owners are changing but this will not bring any difference in the existence of the company this is what the feature of the legal personality is the shareholders may keep on changing every day may keep on changing every time but there will be no change in the existence of the company company will go on accordingly but this is not the case in sole tradership if i am not going to run my business then the business is no longer running because i was the one who is doing the business <clears throat> sorry similarly in the if in the partnership the partners are having a disagreement then obviously they cannot do the business the business will suffer because they are having a disagreement but the company if the shareholders are keep on changing every time there will be no difference there will be no change in the existence of the company so this is what it makes different from the sole tradership and partnership that in the company there is a limited liability uh the separation of ownership from control that means the companies are managed by director the shareholders are sitting normally outside the organization and those directors and owners are considered separate from the company itself the transfer of ownership does not make any difference within the company the company can borrow in its own name while the sole traders and partners have to take the loans on their own and the second thing is if there is a problem like for example if a sole trader sells some bad thing to a customer the customer going to sue the sole trader if someone is having a disagreement with the partnership they're going to sue the partners but in the companies they cannot sue the owners or the directors they will be actually going against the company rather than 
uh, doing the litigations on the owners and the directors. So this is the difference. Now the types of company, probably you have seen every time in the movies or in the dramas or in the news, whatever. There are two types of companies, public companies and private companies. The private company, as the name suggests, <clears throat> they can issue the shares privately. That means FNF, friends and family. But if you talk about a public company, you can buy the shares of the public company from the stock market. That means a public company issues the shares to the general public. And they are listed on the entity's country's stock exchange. While the private companies are not listed, their shares are not available on the stock exchange. So this is the major difference. The private company issues the shares privately to the friends and family. A public company can shares can issue the shares to the general public. That means they are listed on a stock exchange. But in the legal terms, when the company is usually registered, first they are registered as a private company, and then they can make themselves a public company as well. It is possible that you can directly start by making a public company. You will study the details in your law paper. Now we'll be discussing the advantages and disadvantages of the sole tradership first. Now, obviously there's no disadvantage of doing a business but when we talk about the disadvantages, that means the limitations. Actually, this means the limitations. Otherwise, there is no disadvantage of doing a business. Obviously, you are going to earn something out of it or you will have some experience. So advantages is the limited paperwork. When I'm doing a business and I'm the owner, whether I record it or not, I'm, I'm not accountable to someone. I'm not accountable to someone. If I'm maintaining the records, it is for me. If I'm not maintaining it, no one's gonna ask me other than the taxation authority. Owner has complete control over the business. If I am gonna extend my business, I gonna, I'm gonna close some part of the business, it is up to me. The owner has a control. So this is the advantage. There's no involvement of someone. Owner is entitled to the profits and ownership of the assets, enjoys all the profits, as I told you. Less stringent reporting obligations. Now, obviously, uh, there is no legal requirement to publish your accounts. There is no legal requirements to audit your business. So no audit is required in terms of the sole tradership. No publishment of the accounts is required. can be highly flexible. If I want, if I'm in a mood to start the business, I can start it. If I want some vocations, I'm not accountable to someone, I can just do it. it. Can be flexible. The timings will be flexible. Like for example, I'm doing the business which suits me like the night time. Like for example, you are having the home deliveries of the late night food nowadays common. So disadvantages of a being sole trader. Unlimited liability, yes, because if there there's something bad, there are losses, you have to bear it yourself because you are enjoying the profits yourself. Personal property may be vulnerable for debts. Yes, if you have invested $1,000 in the business and the loss is for $2,000, then you have to bear it even if you have to sell your own property to bear it because there is unlimited liability. Large sum of capital are less likely to be available. Yes, because you are a sole trader, your financing is restricted. You can go to the bank, but obviously the bank will be giving you the loans based on the security you are keeping. You may have a little security to keep. The bank cannot give the loan to your business because you are not a company. So the financing is limited. May lead to long working hours. Yes, because obviously when you are managing it yourself, you have to do a lot of work, a lot of hard work in order to make your business successful. Maybe issues of continuity of business in the event of death or illness. Yes, because you are the only one who is actually controls, controlling and owning the business. 
that means if something happens to you the business will end up or will suffer now you have the similar advantage and disadvantages of the partnership again less stringent reporting obligations so no audit is required unless the partners requires themselves there is no legal requirement of having the audits of the partnership as well just like the stole tradership so there is no need of the audit no compulsory audits as long as the partners are requiring it because sometimes there are inactive partners who have invested in the business but they are sitting outside those inactive partners sometimes we call them as a sleeping partners may require the audits in order to make sure that the active partner is not doing some fraud with them so unless and until it is required by themselves there is no legal requirement of having the audit and the second thing is again no publishment of accounts there is no need additional capital can be raised like if your partnership is going successful you can attract more partners to it like because you because you are having two partners now and your partnership is going fine now the people think this is a successful business you can attract more people to invest in your business division of the roles and responsibilities yes this is known as the segregation of duties now everyone is having his own role segregation of duties everyone having a different skill set like i can manage finance so i am doing the finance for the business you are better in marketing so you are marketing the brand of the partnership sharing of the risk and losses between more people yes because you will not be only responsible for the losses at least it going to spread on few people no company tax <clears throat> on the business the partners will be paying their personal tax but no tax will be on the partnership because again it is not a legal entity disadvantages again unlimited liability although you will be sharing the profit and losses according to your agreed ratio but there is no cap there is no restriction on the full amount of losses there is no restriction there is unlimited liability again the issues in case of death or illness slower decision making because if you are having a disagreement then once you are actually done with taking the decision you will not be implementing that thing sometimes there are a lot of disagreements so it slows down the decision making conflict of interest and disputes make the partnership uh problematic now we have the company advantages and disadvantages again you have studied a lot of it because i have already explained it limited liability makes the investment less risky because you know you are only you are only liable up to your investment and not more than that limited liability makes raising finance easier the people will be attracted more because they know okay what maximum they can lose is the investment they are doing not more than that a limited company has a separate legal entity from its shareholders yeah shareholders are sitting outside the organization so if something is happening bad the company will be bearing it rather than the shareholders themselves there are tax advantages <clears throat> yeah because the the company tax is actually much lesser than the personal tax it is relatively easy to transfer shares from one owner to another that is perpetual succession if i am selling my shares to anyone else i can sell it if they want to sell it they can sell it to someone else so these shares keep on rolling keep on rolling and the shareholders keep on changing but it doesn't create any difference on the existence of the company disadvantages of trading as a limited liability there are certain you have to publish your accounts first of all again you have to make it and you have to publish it so everyone will know what you are earning so that means you have to publish it because the public is usually buying the shares limited liability companies financial statement have to comply with the legal agreed requirements so that means when you are making your financials you have to make it according to the company law you cannot make the accounts as per your wish you have to comply what they require your accounts to be then you need a compulsory audit so you have to pay the audit fee for it again shares issue are regulated obviously when the company wants to issue the shares they they have to tell the the company registrar how many shares they can issue 
they cannot even reduce their share capital without the authorization of the uh, company registrar and the court. They cannot reduce their capital even without telling to the relevant authorities. So because the companies are much more regulated due to their limited liability thing. Now the last slide is separate entity concept. This is an accounting concept, first of all, which says that the entity, that means the business, and the owner of the business are separate entities. Like say, for example, if I am doing a business, even a sole traditionship, if I am putting some money in the business, the business is actually liable to give the returns to the owner because the owner is investing money into the business. Similarly, if the, if the owner is withdrawing some money from the business, they should record it. For example, if a business owner bought an asset for their personal use, the asset is not the property of the business. So this makes business different from the rest of the activities of the owner. So owner and the business are two separate entities. This is a separate entity concept. So this was the introduction to the business. We started with discussing the what is business and then we discussed the types of business. We discussed the legal entity explanation, the types of the company and then advantages and disadvantages of sole tradership, partnership and the company. And the last slide was the separate entity concept. Hopefully you understood the idea.